How long can a person hold his or her breath? You usually don't have to think much about your breathing because your brain controls it automatically. When you have a lot of carbon dioxide the waste gas produced by body processes in your blood. Your brain gets the message and tells your lungs to exhale and get rid of it. This action then causes you to inhale. Drawing in air that eventually delivers oxygen to every cell in your body. This carefully regulated exhaling and inhaling takes place. About 10 to 14 times each minute when you are breathing calmly. When you need more oxygen than usual, your brain takes care of that, too. When you're exercising or working hard. Your brain tells you to breathe more quickly, taking in 15 to 20 times more air. If that still doesn't deliver all the oxygen that your muscles need. You may run out of breath, which forces you to rest. You will still breathe hard. At that point every second or so until your muscles are able to work again. So you can see that trying to stop the automatic way that your brain controls your breathing is nearly impossible. When you hold your breath, carbon dioxide builds up in your blood, unable to exit through your lungs. Not long after that in less than a minute your brain will force you to take a deep breath. As hard as you try not to. You may be able to hold your breath a little longer than a minute if you prepare your lungs first. Taking several deep breaths to fill them with as much air as possible before you start. With a lot of practice and physical training. Some people have been able to hold their breath for a few minutes. Be careful testing your breath holding limits. Because at some point the lack of oxygen could make you faint. What is a lie? A lie is a statement that isn't true. It is told on purpose to make others believe something that is false. Sometimes people tell what are called white lies. Which are generally told to avoid hurting someone's feelings. If your grandma asks if you like her cookies, for example. You might say yes even though they tasted like cardboard. While your motives may be pure. It's still best to tell the truth in as gentle a way as possible, or, in the cookie example. To redirect the conversation by pointing out something your grandma makes that you really do like. Most people would rather know they can count on you to give an honest answer. Than suspect that you might be saying something just to make them feel good. How do elevators work? An elevator is any device that moves things or people from one level to another. They are especially important in tall structures like skyscrapers. Where climbing stairs to get to top floors would be very difficult. The car of an elevator, in which people ride. 
is attached to guard rails inside a tall, empty space called a shaft. It is moved by a steel cable that is attached to a large weight that counterbalances it. An electric motor raises and lowers the cable. Changing the positions of the car and weight as the elevator moves from floor to floor. Usually posted inside an elevator are numbers that indicate the car's weight limit. An elevator motor cannot do its job if a car is a lot heavier than the weight that balances it. The first elevators in use were not especially safe because once in a while a cable would break. And a car, pulled by gravity, would come crashing down. Safety devices were soon added, though, to keep such disasters from occurring. American inventor Alicia Otis invented the first safety elevator in 1853. Additional ropes attached to cars and powerful metal jaws that grip guard rails keep elevators from falling if their main cables break. Other safety devices keep elevators from moving when their doors are still open and from traveling. Too fast. Automatic switches in the shaft allow an elevator to hurry past unwanted floors. Or to slow and stop when a chosen floor is reached, unlocking its doors to admit and release passengers. What is the difference between fur and hair? While there is some debate about this. Most scientists agree that there is no real difference between fur and hair. There are many different kinds of hair. The hair on a dog is different from the hair on a polar bear. Which is different from the hair on a person's head. And the hair on a person's head is different from the whiskers on a man's face. But it's. All hair. Many fur-covered animals actually have two different kinds of fur, the ground hair. Sometimes called secondary hair, which is the dense, soft undercoat of hair. And guard hair, also known as primary hair, which is the longer, coarser outer layer of fur. Ground hair helps the animal maintain its body temperature. While guard hair protects the ground hair from water, snow, or insects. Some animals, like certain kinds of lambs, only have ground hair. And some animals such as horses, primates. A group that includes people, and some dogs have only guard hair. Animal fur has long been used to create clothing for people. At one time, fur outerwear was necessary to protect people from harsh winter weather. In modern times, however, fur coats are a luxury item. Many of the animals whose fur is prized for its beauty and warmth like minks and foxes are raised on fur ranches that were set up expressly to produce fur coats to sell. Why do we need table manners? It does seem that there are more rules about eating at a table with others than just about anything else. Put your napkin in your lap. Don't take huge bites. Don't talk with your mouth full. Ask for something to be passed to you instead of reaching for it. 
Don't start eating until everyone is seated and food has been offered all around. Why does my skin turn red or brown if I stay out in the sun for a long time? A sunburn occurs when your skin is overexposed to the rays of the sun. Too much sunlight inflames surface skin and the tissues beneath it just like a regular. Burn from touching something hot causing redness, hotness, tenderness, and swelling. In bad cases, blisters may even appear as the body begins to. Form and protect new skin to replace the skin damaged by sunburn. Usually people who have fair, or light, skin get sunburns. Such people have less melanin in their skin the pigment that determines skin color. As well as hair and eye color. Melanin is made in special cells called melanocytes. People with light skin have fewer of these. Sun exposure makes melanocytes produce more melanin in an effort to darken skin protecting it from damage by shading its deeper layers. This process creates what we know as a suntan. Dark skinned people can produce a lot of melanin fast tanning quickly when they are in the sun. But light-skinned people usually get burned before. Their melanocytes can produce the amount of melanin needed for protection. Fair people can get tans only if they do it very slowly. Exposing themselves to the sun a little bit at a time. Scientists think that various groups of people around the world developed. Different skin colors because of where their ancestors once lived. In hot, sunny places, people develop dark skin for protection. In cooler places, where sunlight was not as strong, people developed lighter skin. Why do some fruits and vegetables turn brown after you cut them? Some fruits and vegetables, like apples and potatoes, have chemicals in them that turn brown when they mix with oxygen in the air. A chemical reaction called oxidation causes the brown. Coating on the cut surfaces of such fruits and vegetables. This coating actually preserves the rest of the fruit or vegetable at least for a while by forming a protective coating that keeps oxygen from getting at the rest. By brushing the cut surface right away with lemon juice. You can keep oxygen from getting to the flesh of a fruit or vegetable and stop it from turning brown altogether. What did people use before toothbrushes were invented? Early in human history, People used anything that they could find to keep their teeth clean. Usually a thin, sharp object, like a stick, was used to pick out food left between teeth. Chewing on the end of certain sticks would fray the wood. Making a kind of brush, which could then be rubbed across the teeth. Even today, Members of primitive tribes chew sticks to keep their teeth clean. 
the constant chewing produces more saliva than usual, which helps wash food away. Later, people found that if they rubbed abrasive elements, like salt or chalk, across their teeth, they could get rid of grime. They also used water and pieces of rough cloth to clean their teeth. Toothpicks made of all kinds of materials also became popular. Rich people had jeweled toothpicks made of gold and silver. Toothbrushes for the wealthy, with fancy handles and hog bristles, came into use in the 18th century. Only much later, when cheaper, wooden handled toothbrushes were made and the importance of good dental hygiene became known, did most people start to regularly use them? What is a toadstool? A toadstool is simply a mushroom, the reproductive part of certain fungal growths that has an umbrella or cone-shaped cap on a straight stem. Because mushrooms often grow in cool, moist, dark places, where most toads like to live. And because they are shaped like little stools, the name toadstool arose to describe them. Usually the term toadstool is used when talking about a type of mushroom that is not suitable for eating or is poisonous. The practice of calling such mushrooms toadstools may have come from the fact that some toads emit poisonous fluid through their skin. What are eating disorders? Eating disorders are psychological, or mental. Ailments that involve an obsession with food and with being thin. Eating disorders strike about 1% of teenagers in the United States and girls are affected far more often than boys. People with eating disorders frequently feel depressed and anxious. And they often have a low opinion of themselves. They develop an obsession with food and sometimes devote many hours a day to an intense exercise routine. They frequently withdraw from friends and family. Finding excuses to avoid social situations, particularly those that involve food. The two most common eating disorders are anorexia and bulimia. People suffering from anorexia avoid eating whenever possible. What little food they do eat causes anxiety and fear that it will make them fat. Anorexic people usually lose weight rapidly. But even after they've become alarmingly skinny they still look in the mirror and see themselves as overweight. Anorexia can cause a severe drop in energy and ability to concentrate. It can also result in damage to internal organs, loss of hair, and weakening of bones. If it goes untreated, anorexia can become quite serious and even deadly. Bulimia is characterized by behavior known as binge and purge. People suffering from this disorder eat large quantities of food, but as soon as they've finished eating they make themselves throw up or take laxatives, which stimulates the colon to produce a bowel movement. Bulimia can cause damage to the kidneys and stomach. 
and the frequent vomiting sometimes causes the person's tooth enamel to decay. People with anorexia often appear dramatically thinner. But bulimia can be harder to recognize as a bulimic person does not actually lose much weight. Doctors aren't exactly sure what causes eating disorders. Some believe they are a result of the tremendous pressure society places on young girls to be thin models. In magazines and celebrities on television reinforce the idea that being beautiful equals being thin. Some research has suggested that eating disorders may be the result of a chemical imbalance in the brain. And that the tendency to develop such a disorder can run in families. Regardless of the cause, it's vitally important that people with eating disorders seek treatment. Eating disorders can be very serious, and the longer they go on, the harder it becomes to treat them. What happens to old money? And money gets damaged or dirty or wears out. Commercial banks send the bills to one of the Federal Reserve Banks in exchange for new bills. If the Reserve Bank determines that the currency is unfit for circulation, it is destroyed. Damaged coins are returned to the Treasury. While the paper used for currency is more durable than regular paper, it is still fairly delicate and can't stay in circulation very long before getting worn out. Different bills have different lifespans, smaller bills get handled more and therefore wear out sooner. A $1 bill, for example, usually lasts around 18 months. While a $20 bill can be in circulation for two years and a $100 bill for eight and a half years. A coin, naturally, lasts longer usually around 25 years. It isn't just Federal Reserve Banks that can provide new bills in exchange for old ones. Anybody who has money that is torn or damaged can take it to a local bank and get a new bill. As long as more than half of the original bill is intact. A bank should be able to provide a new bill of the same value. How does my voice work? Your vocal cords are stretched flaps of tissue located in your voice box. Or larynx, which sits at the top of your windpipe or trachea. Your voice box is located in your throat. And if you put your fingers on it while you talk or sing, you can feel it humming. When air from your lungs passes over your vocal cords they vibrate. Surrounding muscles open and close and stretch the vocal cords, changing their vibrations to produce a variety of sounds. The more stretched your vocal cords, the more rapidly they vibrate and the higher the sounds they make. Sounds made in your voice box are further changed when they are shaped by your throat. Tongue, cheeks, and lips, and even teeth, into speech or song. What plants produce some of the smallest seeds? Orchids produce the smallest seeds. 
they measure no more than 0.04 inches, 1 millimeter, in length. And 1 million orchid seeds might weigh less than an ounce, less than 28 grams. Seed size has no bearing on the size of the plant that grows from it. Orchids grow to a larger size than many plants that have much larger seeds. And a huge redwood tree begins as a tiny seed no more than 1 16th of an inch, 1.6 millimeters, long. Why do I have to take a time out sometimes? To help us survive, our bodies and minds are set up to respond. A certain way to situations that we think are threatening. We react physically to such situations first, and we think later. This response was very useful in the lives of prehistoric men and women when they roamed the planet and faced physical dangers constantly. When a wild animal attacked, for instance, a cave dweller fled or drew his or her weapon without stopping first to think about the danger he was in. In the modern world, we find ourselves in very few situations that threaten our lives. But our bodies still react to things in the same instant, physical way. When troubling situations occur, our feelings come first before our thinking takes over. When someone does something we don't like, or that upsets us, our first reaction is to act on our feelings, which might include yelling or hitting. A person can get pretty worked up physically, which doesn't allow him or her to listen to the thinking messages that are also going on inside. When an adult makes you take a time out, it takes you away from the upsetting situation. Your body and feelings can settle down then, and you can start to think. It is normal and natural to react strongly to things that put your body on alert, but as you get older, you will begin to recognize that most situations don't require a caveman response. You will be able to control your feelings better and use thinking to guide your actions. What is acid rain? Some of the gases released as waste products from factories, cars, and power plants mix with water vapor in the atmosphere to produce acid rain, or sleet or snow. Rain is slightly acidic anyway, but when mixed with such chemicals as sulfuric acid and nitric acid, it can reach dangerous levels. Acid rain can damage soil, crops, and forests as well as eat away at the outer surfaces of buildings. In some places, acid rain that has fallen into lakes and rivers has caused severe harm to the animals and plants living there. Acid rain has affected many parts of the United States and Canada, as well as countries in Northern and Western Europe and parts of Asia. Because the wind can carry pollutants great distances from their source, Many areas have suffered devastating effects of acid rain without being responsible for the chemical waste that caused it.
What are pine cones? The cones found on pines and other conifer plants are reproductive structures. Small male cones produce millions of grains of pollen that are carried by the wind to sticky female cones. Where fertilization takes place and seeds begin to grow. Shortly after they release their pollen, male cones die, their work done. Soft and green at the time of fertilization, female cones gradually become larger, brown, and woody. This change makes room for and protects the growing seeds within its scales. Which unlike those of flowers Dante have hard pod coverings of their own, conifer seeds are described as naked. After a couple of years, when its seeds are mature, a female cone will open and release them into the wind. The female cone may then fall from the plant, its work also done. What are killer bees? Killer bees are the result of a scientific experiment begun in the mid-1950s, when European honeybees and African bees, which are accustomed to hot temperatures, were brought to Brazil and bred with each other in an effort to create a honeybee that would produce honey in hot, tropical climates. The experiment was a big failure because unlike the mild-mannered, European honeybee the new Africanized honeybee had an aggressive nature. Quick to attack intruders, the new bees have been responsible for a number of human deaths. The danger of these bees comes from their tendency to attack in swarms. If a person is stung by enough bees at one time, it could trigger a severe allergic reaction. These killer bees have made their way into the southern United States. But the American beekeeping industry is working on ways to correct this experiment gone wrong. Why do some whales make sounds underwater? with special instruments. People have been able to record the deep sounds that some whales make as they swim underwater. The mellow sounds are so lovely to listen to that they have been recorded on compact discs and tapes and sold in stores. Some whale sounds resemble barking and can be heard by humans. Whales also make clicking sounds that people can only hear with the help of special equipment. Scientists think that whales use these sounds to help them find their way and keep track of one another. Whales travel in groups, called pods, as they swim in the deep and often dark ocean. This technique is called echolocation. The vocalizations bounce off objects, creating echoes that return to the whale. Whales can see fairly well with their small eyes, but their hearing is extraordinary. Echolocation can tell the whale how big an object is, how far away it is, and in what direction it is traveling. Why must I always wear a helmet when riding a bike?
While riding bicycles is a lot of fun, it is important to remember that bikes are not just toys. They are machines that can sometimes be involved in accidents that result in injury. So all bike riders as well as inline skaters and scooter riders must follow certain rules. For their own safety and the safety of others. Bicyclists have to follow some of the same traffic laws that people who drive cars do. Like stopping at stop signs and obeying traffic lights. But bike riders also have their own special set of safety rules. They have to make sure that their bikes have reflectors in order to ride safely at night. They can't let other people ride with them like on bicycle. Handlebars because that threatens their balance and could lead to accidents. One of the most important of all bicycling safety rules is wearing a protective helmet. Head injuries are the leading cause of death in bicycle crashes. About 300 children die in bike accidents each year. Another 17,000 to 18,000 children in bike accidents suffer brain injuries that sometimes cause very serious and even lifelong problems. So it doesn't matter where you will be riding or for how long you should always wear your helmet. Accidents are called accidents because they are unexpected and can happen at any time. If your friends don't wear helmets when you bicycle together, teach them by your wise example. In the United States, bicycle helmets save one life every day. And prevent one head injury from happening every four minutes. What did dinosaurs eat? Dinosaurs came in many different shapes and sizes, and they also had a variety of diets. Most dinosaurs ate plants, with the very large dinosaurs eating leaves from the tops of trees and smaller ones eating plants and bushes growing close to the ground. Some dinosaurs were meat eaters, with most hunting other animals for food and some being scavengers who ate the flesh of dead animals they encountered. The hunters preyed on plant-eating dinosaurs and even on each other. Smaller meat-eating dinosaurs fed on other animals, like insects, lizards, and mammals. Evidence suggests that some dinosaurs hunted in packs, while others lived solitary lives. What is a snowflake? When droplets of water in a cloud come into contact with tiny particles specks of dust. Tiny pollutants, minuscule pieces of vegetation that have been carried up by wind they freeze into ice crystals and begin to fall. Traveling through a cloud, these ice crystals may pass by air containing supercooled droplets. Which is water that is below the freezing point but remains a liquid. These droplets attach themselves to the sides of the ice crystals, where they freeze, forming snowflakes. When water freezes it forms flat, six-sided ice crystals. Though the way the crystals clump together accounts for a number of different snowflake shapes. As these crystals increase in size, they fall to earth. 
if the cloud from which they fall is low in the sky. The snowflakes are likely to stay frozen and will fall to the ground as snow. Although it's hard to imagine, each snowflake does seem to be unique. With a shape or size unlike any other. One American who enjoyed studying the weather, W.A. Bentley, spent nearly 50 years of his life making micro photographs of snowflakes to see if this was true. He never found two snowflakes that were alike. How do cat years compare with human years? The formula to figure out the age of a cat in human years goes like this. At one year old a cat has the equivalent of 20 human years and each additional year counts as another 4. The average lifespan of a house cat is between 12 and 14 years. Which equals between 64 and 72 human years. How did we get the United States National Anthem? In September 1814, the United States and Great Britain were in the midst of fighting what is known as the War of 1812. The British had taken over Washington, D. C. and planned to attack Baltimore, Maryland. A few American citizens, including a lawyer and poet named Francis Scott Key, approached the British fleet, which was anchored in Chesapeake Bay, to request the release of an American who had been taken prisoner. The British agreed to let the prisoner and the others return to American shores. But their return had to wait until the British were done attacking Fort McHenry, which was defending Baltimore. Throughout the night of September 13 to 14, Key heard the explosions of the battle. Anxiously awaiting morning to see whether the Americans had won the battle. In the early morning light, Key could see that Fort McHenry's enormous American flag was still waving. Indicating that the Americans had been triumphant. Relieved and inspired by the sight, Key composed a poem called Defense of Fort M. Henry. How much snow makes an inch of rain? Ordinarily, 10 inches of snow has about the same amount of water as 1 inch of rain. But temperature affects this general rule. The dry, fluffy snow we see during very cold weather holds less. Water it could take 30 inches of that snow to equal 1 inch of water. The heavy, Wet snow that falls when temperatures are just around freezing contains more. Moisture as few as 3 inches of that kind of snow could melt into 1 inch of water. Why do I sweat when I'm hot? When you get hot, your body has a couple of ways to cool down. The blood vessels in your skin expand, allowing more blood to flow through them. 
the heat the blood carries then escapes through your skin. When you are hot you also produce more sweat. Or perspiration, fluid made in sweat glands, millions of them. That cover your body, located deep in your skin. Sweat carries body heat to the surface of your skin through pores. Or tiny holes, where the moisture evaporates into the air and cools you off. When you sweat faster than it can evaporate, you can get pretty soggy. It is important to remember to drink plenty of water when you are doing a lot of sweating so that you don't dehydrate or lose bodily fluids. About 62% of a person's body weight is water a lot of fluid is necessary to keep body processes running smoothly. Under extremely hot conditions, a person can lose up to 20 quarts of perspiration a day. Which can lead to serious health problems if those fluids aren't replaced. You've probably noticed that your body doesn't do much to cool you off on very humid, sticky days. Sweat needs to evaporate, or turn into water vapor, in order to make you feel cooler. But on humid days, the air has so much water vapor in it already that it can't hold any more. When the air is nearly saturated like that, the sweat on your skin cannot evaporate fast enough to give you any relief. Sweat will evaporate better off your skin if you wear cotton clothing, which lets your skin breathe rather than synthetic fibers like nylon, spandex, or polyester. How big is the universe? Scientists have demonstrated that the universe is expanding in size. With galaxies moving farther from one another, objects within a galaxy, like the planets in our solar system, don't move away from each other, however, because they are held together by gravity. Because distances in space are so huge, scientists often use the measurement of light years instead of miles to describe them. A light year is the distance that light can travel through space in one year. Which is 5.88 trillion miles, 9.46 trillion kilometers. The farthest galaxies that can be seen from Earth are thought to be 12 billion to 14 billion light years away. That means that the observable universe has a diameter of up to 28 billion light years. And that's just the galaxies we can see imagine if we could stand at the edge of one of the farthest galaxies. Look through a telescope, and see galaxies extending 14 billion light years from there. The potential size of the universe is mind-boggling. It is nearly impossible to imagine the distance of one light year, let alone 14 billion of them. Why is it easier to float in salt water than in fresh water? It is easier to float in salt water because the salt makes the water heavier than fresh water. If you had two gallon jugs, one filled with salt water and one with fresh water, the one with the salt water would weigh slightly more. And the denser, 
heavier, the water, the easier it is for people and objects to float in it. An object can float in a liquid when that object's weight equals the weight of the water it displaces. Or pushes away, the water is displaced in order to make room for the object. Here's another way of looking at it, when you sit in a bathtub, you can see the water level rise. If you remove the amount of water that was pushed up by your body. It would weigh the same as your body does. When the water is dense, like salt water is, less of it is displaced by your body. It takes less water to equal your body's weight, and you float higher than you would in fresh water. What did the first plants look like? When you look at the green slime covering a still pond. You are looking at types of plants single celled green algae that are thought to be among the first that appeared on earth. Though they share many characteristics. Some scientists do not actually classify algae as plants, but as part of the kingdom Protista. About 630 million years ago plants like these first grew. In the oceans and spread to other watery environments. While they have no roots, stems, or leaves, algae do contain chlorophyll and make their own food through. Photosynthesis using the energy of the sun, carbon dioxide, and water and give off the waste gas oxygen. Because so much of Earth's surface is covered with water. Algae including seaweeds are a major source of the oxygen we breathe. Over time, plants with more complex parts evolved and eventually adapted to life on land. Beginning about 400 million years ago. How much of Earth's surface is covered by water? About 71% of Earth's surface is covered by water. 3% of this supply consists of fresh water, most of which is found in glaciers and ice caps. With a small percentage in rivers, lakes, and streams. The remaining 97% of the world's bodies of water is salt water seas and oceans. While all bodies of salt water can be referred to as seas. Technically a sea is different from an ocean because it is smaller and at least somewhat surrounded by land. Who decides which of the divorced parents their children will live with? Because a marriage is a legal partnership, its dissolution, or end, takes place by a judgment of a court. The court, then, awards custody of children after a divorce. The judge that presides over the court makes this decision. Ideally keeping the best interests of the children in mind. A judge's involvement is especially important when parents can't agree over who should be the main caregiver for their children and provide their main home. But in the best cases, both parents and children decide together how they would like custody to be awarded. And they let the court know their preferences.
Sometimes joint custody is the solution, which means that the parents share responsibility for the kids. And the children divide their time equally between their mother and father and their separate homes. Most of the time, however, one parent becomes the custodial parent and the children live with her or him. While the other parent has visitation rights. Which means that he or she can see the children at certain times, like on weekends or during summer vacations. Why do I get sick? When you get sick, part or all of your body isn't working as it should. The cause of sickness can come from the inside your body or from the outside world. Diseases that start on the inside are usually inherited in the genes that you receive from your parents. Which make up the master plan that determines how your body will grow and run. Abnormal development or functioning of different body. Systems is the cause of many chronic, long-lasting, diseases. Things in the outside world can cause sickness, too. Poisons in the environment can cause illnesses in people. Not eating the right foods, with their important nutrients, can also cause diseases. But the most common cause of sickness from the outside world is infectious agents. These agents are usually microscopic organisms, living things so small that they can only be seen with the help of microscopes. Like bacteria and viruses, which we commonly refer to as germs. Bacteria and viruses and other microscopic organisms live in the air, water, and soil that make up our world. They are on the things and people we touch and in the food we eat. Many of them are beneficial, bacteria are needed to make cheese. Some bacteria help vegetables like peas and beans grow. And some bacteria clean the environment and enrich the soil by feeding on dead plants and animals. But there are other microscopic organisms that invade the bodies of plants and animals and people and cause diseases. Your skin is a wonderful protective barrier that keeps a lot of the disease-causing germs that you run into each day from entering your body. Only when you have an opening in your skin like a cut or a scrape are germs likely to enter there. Most germs enter through your mouth and nose. Making their way farther into your body through your respiratory or digestive tracts. But even then, Certain chemicals in body tissues and fluids keep many harmful germs from causing problems. When an infection does begin, though with the germs multiplying inside your body your immune or defense system goes into action to get rid of the foreign organisms. Your white blood cells produce special substances called antibodies that attack and destroy the invaders, helping you to recover. Sometimes it takes several days for your immune system to stop the infection and for your body to repair the damage it caused. But after your illness you will have an immunity to the specific germs that were responsible for your sickness. This means that if the same kind of germs enter your body again, the antibodies already there will destroy them before any illness occurs. By the time you are an adult, 
you will get far fewer infections than you did as a child. Because you will have become immune to many of the common bacteria and viruses in the world. But when you are young and encountering different germs for the first time, you do get sick a lot. What is the hottest temperature ever recorded on Earth? The hottest temperature ever recorded on Earth was in the desert settlement of al Aziziyat, Libya, located in North Africa. On September 13, 1922. That day the temperature reached 136 degrees Fahrenheit, 58 degrees Celsius. Which bird lays the largest eggs? The largest eggs? not surprisingly, are laid by the largest bird, which is the ostrich. An ostrich egg averages around 6 inches, 150 millimeters. In length and around 5 inches, 125 millimeters, in diameter. It weighs about 3 pounds, 1.35 kilograms. A male ostrich mates with several females during one mating season. And all of those females lay their eggs in one large nest, which can contain several dozen eggs at one time. Over the course of the 40 days it takes the eggs to hatch. The male sits on the nest at night, and the females take turns during the day. Why are some animals active only at night? Many animals, including lots of large predators, are diurnal. Meaning they are active during the day and sleep at night. Others are nocturnal sleeping throughout the day in burrows dens, caves, or trees emerging at night to find food. Nocturnal animals that are predators use the cover of darkness to hunt their prey without being seen. Those that are prey can also use the darkness to hide. In general, there is less competition for food at night. In desert climates, Nights have the added advantage of being cooler. Many animals spend the hottest part of the day sleeping and conserving energy, coming out in the cool night air to hunt for a meal. Nocturnal animals have special adaptations that allow them to function in darkness. Several nighttime creatures, including owls and cats, have eyes that are a certain shape and have a particular kind of cell that helps them see with very little light. Bats, the only flying mammals, are usually nocturnal, and some species get around in the dark by using a kind of sonar called echolocation, the bats make sounds that bounce off nearby objects. And when the sound waves return they carry information about the location and size of those objects. Good hearing and senses of smell also come in handy for nocturnal animals. Some animals leave a scented trail, excreting fluid produced in glands in their bodies. To make it easier for them to find their way back in the dark.
What is pollution? Pollution refers to excessive amounts of waste, much of which contains harmful poisons that are released into the environment air, water, and soil. Pollution is usually caused by people, more specifically it is caused by the waste produced by the cars we drive. The factories that make the things we buy. The power plants that produce the gas and electricity we use, and even the farms that grow the food we eat. Pollution has been a problem ever since large numbers of people occupied a relatively small space. During the 1800s and 1900s, however, as the world became increasingly crowded, and more and more factories were built, environmental pollution became a serious issue. Air pollution is caused primarily by the burning of fuel. Gas-powered transportation methods airplanes, cars, boats, and trains are the biggest culprits. The amount of fuel required to heat and cool homes and other buildings also contributes huge amounts of air pollution. Air pollutants damage Earth's atmosphere and harm plants and animals, including humans. Water pollution comes from a variety of sources. Any factory that makes things toys, tires, steel creates waste products as well. This waste, filled with toxic chemicals, is often released into bodies of water, including lakes, rivers, and oceans. Other harmful water pollutants include sewage, which is human and animal waste. Most sewage is somewhat filtered in septic tanks and treatment plants. But some raw sewage still gets released into water. The chemicals used to control pests and fertilize plants on farms also ends up in lakes and rivers when rainwater drains from the farmland to the bodies of water. Ships carrying massive quantities of oil have also been responsible for polluting the water. If those ships break apart, the oil spills into the water killing birds and fish and damaging the shoreline. The world's oceans and rivers can break down some pollutants into forms that are either harmless or beneficial to aquatic life. But when pollution levels become too high, the plants and animals living in the water suffer. Land pollution comes primarily from garbage. Some types of garbage paper, plastic, some metals, glass. And so on are recyclable, meaning they can be processed and reused. Some garbage is biodegradable which means it will naturally break down into tiny particles that can be reused by the environment. Vast quantities of the garbage we produce, however, is not easily broken down or recycled. Garbage is usually dumped in landfills, and as some things slowly decay. A harmful gas called methane is released into the air. Another source of land pollution are the chemicals used on farms. Some of those chemicals are washed into bodies of water. And some are absorbed by the ground where they can harm various forms of plant and animal life. Is a starfish really a fish?
In spite of their name, starfish are not true fish. They are invertebrates known as echinoderms, all fish are vertebrates. There are actually close to 2,000 species of starfish. And they can grow to as large as 25 inches, 65 centimeters, across. They usually have five arms attached to a disc-like body, and they can grow a new limb if one is lost. Starfish have tube feet on the underside of their arms that allow them to move and to cling to rocks or coral. The starfish's mouth is located on the underside of the disc, and some species actually turn their stomachs out of their bodies to surround and digest their prey, including oysters, mussels, and clams. Why don't some kernels pop? Such duds probably don't have enough water inside to pop them. What is an amphibian? Amphibians are cold-blooded vertebrates that spend part of their lives in bodies of water or watery places, and part on land. The name comes from the Greek word amphibios, which means living a double life. This class includes frogs and toads, salamanders, and Sicilians, which look like large earthworms. Amphibians start out as eggs that are usually laid and hatched in water or moist ground. And the early stage of most amphibians' lives are spent in the water. Baby amphibians, called larvae, don't resemble the adults at all. As they mature, they go through major changes, called a metamorphosis. Adult amphibians usually live on land. Never straying far from the water and returning to it when it's time to breed. Frogs and toads, for example, emerge from their eggs as tadpoles. Sometimes called polywogs, little creatures with a rounded head and a tail. They have gills for breathing in water and cannot survive on land. Over time, the gills become air-breathing lungs, the tail disappears, and limbs develop. Adult frogs and toads may spend a good amount of time in and around water. But they need air in order to breathe. Not every amphibian follows the usual pattern of spending. The larval stage in water and the adult stage on land. As with every part of the animal kingdom, there are some creatures that don't fit the mold. For instance, some tree frogs living in tropical regions never leave their leafy homes. Their eggs must be kept moist, however. So the female frogs lay them in the drops of water that gather on the tree's leaves after a rain. For the most part amphibians are fairly small creatures, with most being only a few inches long. The smallest frog in the world is no bigger than a person's thumbnail. The largest amphibian is the Chinese giant salamander, which can be around 5 feet, 1.5 meters, long. Amphibians do not have scales, plates, or fur their skin is usually smooth. With some toads being notable exceptions, and moist. In addition to breathing through their lungs. 
amphibians breathe through their skin, and that moistness is necessary for them to do so. To make sure their skin stays moist. Amphibians secrete a fluid that spreads over their skin and locks in moisture. Why are pigs so dirty? Because pigs will eat almost anything, they have traditionally been fed with farm leftovers and waste. This unappealing diet commonly known as slop may contain food waste from a farm household or the unusable. Byproducts of the manufacturing processes for things like butter and cheese and even beer brewing. Pigs are natural foragers. Frequently using their snouts to dig up roots or grubs for food when they are in the wild. On farms they are fed from low troughs. But their big snouts and foraging habits still make them very messy eaters. Adding to the dirty reputation of pigs is the fact that they have usually been kept in pens. Or styes close to farm buildings to make their feeding quick and easy. They and their messes have been confined to small spaces. Unlike cows and sheep, which are free to roam pasture land. Because pigs are raised mainly for their meat and fat. They are given a lot of food and spend most of their time eating. Piglets that weigh only a few pounds at birth can reach more than 200 pounds. 90 kilograms, in less than half a year. What is the largest bird? The ostrich is the largest living bird, some extinct species were larger. Found primarily in Africa, the male ostrich can grow to be nearly 8 feet, 2.5 meters. Tall, with its neck making up almost half of its height, females are a bit smaller. Ostriches can weigh almost 350 pounds. 159 kilograms. These flightless birds travel in groups and can frequently be found in the company of other grazing animals. People have harvested ostrich feathers for hundreds of years to decorate hats and other items. And in recent years, ostrich meat has become more popular. How fast does hair grow? Human head hair grows about 6 inches, 15 centimeters, every year. During the summertime it grows a little faster. Because warm weather causes more blood to reach the scalp, which gives hair cells extra nourishment. In cold weather, less blood travels to the surface of the body to skin and hair. Cells because it is more important that the internal organs that run the body are kept warm. What are chimneys for? Since ancient times people have built fires to stay warm. When fires were built in small dwellings, an opening was needed through which smoke 
and other byproducts of burning like the dangerous gas carbon monoxide could escape. In places where house were made of combustible, or easily burned, materials like wood and thatch. Dried grasses, fires had to be built outside to protect such dwellings from going up in flames. But even under those circumstances, people eventually figured out a way to make indoor fires safely. They built stone hearths in the middle of their houses. Well away from walls, and made holes in their roofs so that smoke could escape. These hearths came to be located in more convenient places once people learned how to build stone. Fireplaces topped with stone chimneys that channeled smoke safely out of dwellings, high above their roofs. Stone fireplaces could be safely built into the walls of any type of shelter. While our houses are now usually kept warm by central heating systems. We still build fires in fireplaces for temporary warmth and for their beauty and the cozy feeling they give. Stone or brick hearths and chimneys are still needed to protect house walls and roofs from fire. Even houses without fireplaces have chimneys because most furnaces make heat by burning fuel. The poisonous byproducts of this combustion usually flow out of a house by way of a chimney. Keeping the air indoors healthy and safe to breathe. What's the difference between a continent and a country? A continent is a land mass that is generally except in the cases of Australia and Antarctica, home to a number of countries. Continental boundaries are determined by geography rather than politics. Canada and the United States, for example, are part of the North American continent. Because they occupy the same land mass, not because they share a political system. A country, on the other hand, is a defined territory that governs itself and is recognized by the international community. A country's citizens live under the rule of their government and according to the nation's laws. How long will I live? Because medical science has eliminated or brought under control many of the diseases that once kept people from reaching old age, it is likely that you will live a very long time. Today, the average life expectancy of a man living in the United States is around 74 years. The average American woman will reach the age of 80. Just 100 years ago. The average lifespan was more than 25 years shorter. And because medical science continues to improve health care and is studying old age and trying to find ways to slow it people are expected to live even longer. Many factors contribute to a long life. Usually people live longer in Western Europe and North America and in Japan, than in Latin America, Asia, or Africa. Average lifespans are longer in wealthier, developed, politically stable countries where safe and hygienic housing, healthy diets, and good medical care are common.
Another important factor that determines long life is the genetic information you inherit from your parents. Which give you certain physical and health characteristics. If your great grandparents and grandparents reached old age. For instance, you have a good chance of reaching it yourself. But even if they didn't, don't be concerned. You can overcome a lot of inherited traits simply by following a healthy lifestyle. Eating a good diet, getting regular medical care, and keeping physically active all contribute to a longer life. Why do porcupines have quills? The porcupine's quills are its best method of defending itself from predators. The sharp quills, which are modified hairs, are all over the porcupine's body, including its tail. When the North American porcupine, the most common species in the Americas, is threatened, it turns its tail toward the approaching animal. If attacked, this porcupine will thrash its predator with its tail. Thrusting its quills into the other animal's hide. Often some of the quills will come off the porcupine's tail. And their barbed ends, like a fish hook, will stay embedded in the attacker's skin. The average porcupine has around 30,000 quills. Porcupines are rodents, a group that makes up around half of all mammal species and includes mice, squirrels, and beavers. They are nocturnal, meaning active at night, and they eat tree bark, roots, and other vegetation. Their diet doesn't do much to satisfy their intense salt cravings. So porcupines have been known to chew on things like canoe paddles, animal bones, and even the discarded clothing of humans to get to the salt and oils in these items. How do clocks and other things glow in the dark? When a substance is exposed to light, it absorbs light energy. The molecules of most substances usually release this excess energy in the form of light and heat but do it so quickly that the process can't be seen. Some substances, like calcium sulfide, however, are able to store a portion of the light to which they have been exposed, releasing it a bit at a time. This characteristic is called phosphorescence. Other substances can be added to phosphorescence to increase the amount of time that they can store light. Because the ability usually fades over time. Glow-in-the-dark toys and paint used on clock and watch dials are made of phosphorescent materials. While their slow-releasing light is not detectable during the day. It is very clear at night, when all is dark. Without light exposure, though, phosphorescent things won't work. Because they can't store light energy to release. 